Welcome back, everyone. Let's get back to the conversation. And uh, it's about Nigeria's, uh, what some people will say is the number five man, the head of the nation's judiciary. So today, there is an update on that story. And the Federal High Court has uh, extended a restraining order on the arraignment or continuation of the arraignment at the CCT of uh, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogan. Senator Shehu Stani and Mr. Hamed Tanimu, a lawyer, has been talking to us on the program today. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, talking to us. Yeah. And I, I, before we went on that break, I did ask uh, Mr. Tanimu here uh, a very uh, sensitive question is in the Senator's standing. What's your own take on that? Uh, the sensitive question? No, no, the question I asked him mm -hmm. before we went uh, on that break. That is the question about on again. Yeah, about uh, Justice Onoga. Well, my position is very clear that uh, uh, the whole trial is simply a political assault on, on the nation's judiciary. And uh, land mines, landed mines have made their positions very clear on the procedure the government ought to have taken uh, when there is an allegation of gross misconduct on his side. And uh, we know very well that uh, what the government has done, uh, it's simply trying to intimidate and silence the judiciary. And people can interpret it in different forms. But to me, I see us moving to a very dangerous road. Uh, Nigeria is a nation that is moving uh, on a road that is buried with uh, landmines at short intervals. And every of his steps can be faithful to its own future. So you, you, you also agree with those who describe the move as a suicide to our democracy because of the timing to the election? Well, uh, like I've said, um, there is no way this act by uh, the, the ruling political class uh, can in any way be divorced from politics. And um, all that is there is the fear that this man uh, sits on the highest uh, position in the judiciary. And they don't see him to be in tandem with their own political thinking. And there is that fear and apprehension that in the case of litigations after elections, uh, it may not go their way. And that is just a fact. So that, uh, anybody that's the anybody why you saying think this anything is, is simply going round the cycle of what is an open truth, yes. That's what you, that's how you would describe the whole scenario? And that is my position on it, very clear. I mean, uh, should, aside this procedure that a lot of people had faulted, that the procedure and the process, uh, do you think perhaps there is a right thinking in initiating the process in the first place? Aside the fact that some analysts and lawyers have said the manner in which that procedure was sped up to the moment where the arraignment uh, was almost starting. Uh, aside that, do you see any other meaning to the old scenario? Well, uh, like I've said, first of all, let's get this clear. Uh, it is not, this is not the first time it happens in the history of democracies around the world. And it is also not peculiar with Nigeria. Uh, if you go through history, you will always see the altercation that exists between the executive arm, and most times with the judiciary. Uh, in this aspect, the issues being raised by people is that they look at the timing of the petition written and then the action taken within a very few days. That is one. Secondly, election is just a few weeks at hand. And now, uh, there is no way you can divorce this from politics. And the third aspect of it has to do with the fact that the whole trial, the whole uh, um, speed, to which the events are unfolding is simply about seeing how you can do get him away, get him out of that. And the issues that people will raise is that you look at the hierarchy of the Supreme Court. After him, who comes next? Will that be good for our mm. peace and unity as a country? We have a president that comes from a particular part of a country, and then at a very on the eve of an election, things like this are happening. I mean, we should simply not be going around the cycle. Uh, the government should step down these charges against on again and allow this election to go smoothly 
and also allow all procedures to move. Right. Uh, move if they are interested in actually addressing the issue of his misconduct or non-declaration, they should follow due process as it is. Mr. Tanemo, as it stands right, some people advise me that the federal government should withdraw this case. Do you think it could be right for the FG to look or the, the minister of uh, the attorney general to think in that direction? The attorney general has a mind of his own. He has the statutory power to enter what we call nolly in, term, in criminal prosecution. He can discontinue any prosecution that is ongoing. But the facts still remain the same. I think Nigerians are fast in attributing personality to issue of the way our laws operate. We should divorce our mind from that. What should be our cardinal objective at any point in time is that we should allow our system to function optimally. In Brazil, you have a former president that is well-loved, is in prison. In Thailand, in so many other countries, Nigerians should not treat issue of the enforcement and applicability of our laws. We should not restrict what it about to the personality. Sensitivity to and the timing to election and the, politics. When, when you talk about timing, every offense does not have time in terms of prosecution. It's absolutely the discretion of the prosecuting agency to determine. If there's a murder today, you cannot say because of election, there won't be investigation, there won't be arrest. And talking about the fears, it is uncalled for. It, judicial process takes a very long time, and at all material time, the accused, is, the defendant is presumed innocent until otherwise okay. proven guilty. All right, uh, let's go now. But Senator, the list for the National Assembly is out. And we also saw your governor earlier today on China's television talking about the politics of your state. That's going to be a one very interesting one. Your, your final thought, uh, Senator Shewusani, how do you think this all pans out at the end of the day? Um, well, first of all, uh, Nasr Erufai is unfit to be a governor and he will lose the election. You said what? He's unfit to be a governor. I mean, that's, that's, and, those, and are he, heavy, he lose, those are heavy he, he words. He will lose this for election. For your governor. On I had him party. saying that Christians will not vote for him. Even Muslims will not vote for him. Uh, he has only un unleashed hardship and suffering on the people of Kaduna State. And even President Buhari is not going to save him. We are tired of him and we are sending him out of Kaduna Those are your own views, Senator. And you have only one vote, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but I have millions of people who are also... Uh, in line with my own thinking in the state, and I believe that. Senator, always a pleasure having you, Mr. Tanimu. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Well, that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for being part of it. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye bye.